Hi, I'm Steve Ninnis from Maintenance Experts, MEX Software, and today's course is actually about preventative maintenance. And what I want to do in the next, you know, 15, 20 minutes is actually talk to you about what preventative maintenance is and how you can actually apply it to whatever industry you're in. Now, I know that most of you that I am speaking to will actually be, you're from this industry, you know, you know what, you know, you're part of engineering. And if you are, then I'm sure you've come across this question, which I have many times, and that is, do you know what, do you know, what is the difference between breakdown maintenance and preventative maintenance? It's actually quite hard to discern. So I'm going to use this little thing here as an example of it. I mean, do you know, if this thing fails, all I can do is just, you know, react after the fact and, you know, pick it up, you know, probably put a new one on there because it's so, such a small motor. But I'm not going to get carried away. But this, if this thing fails, it's a breakdown after the fact maintenance. So what is preventative maintenance? Well, preventative maintenance is only one thing. It's actually, you know, looking ahead into the future. If I, all I'm going to be doing is saying, hey, what can I do to stop that thing from failing? So we've got two types of maintenance. We've got breakdown. And we've got PM, or preventative maintenance. Now, it's, they're, they're the two main things. Now, the, the question that I would pose is which of these is better? Okay, is, is this better than that? Now, if you're from a maintenance background, of course, we're all going to say preventative maintenance is the better way to do it. If we're from a production pro, um, background, we'll say we don't care as long as we have our equipment. But, in this situation, let's not look at, say, something this size but let's look at something that's, you know, 30 times the size of it. You know, many kilowatts, you know, come out of the goddamn sucker. Driving some sort of pump or some sort of rotary device, I've got no idea. But if it's a big motor. Now, which one's better? Should we do PM on that? Should we do breakdown? It's pretty simple for us. Is we'd, we'd say break, we'd say PM. Sorry, not breakdown, I made a mistake there. But the thing is though, why? That's the question. Why would I bother to do PM on a big motor? You know, shouldn't I just, you know, shouldn't I just, you know, do what I do with a small thing? Like, you know, what's the value in this in doing all this maintenance stuff? And I and, and I guarantee you, you've been asked that. Why do you do what you do? Well, it's really simple. There's only one word that can summarise everything about why we do preventative maintenance, and that is loss. What preventative maintenance really is, is actually minimising loss in a company. That is it. End of story. So therefore, it makes you think, is there maintenance we are doing that doesn't minimise our losses? And I guarantee you there is. Just as I can guarantee you there's breakdowns that are occurring that are costing you a goddamn fortune. Very simple stuff. So that's what we're trying to do. Now, what sort of losses are we talking about? You know, yes, we're going to do this preventative maintenance stuff, but what are, you know, we're going to do it to minimise our loss, but what are the losses? There's a lot of them. Okay, for example, you know, if this motor fails, okay, it might tear its guts out. So therefore, it's, I have to replace everything at one hit. In this, with a small motor like this, you're probably going to do that. With a big one, you're not. You know, it's going to cost you a lot of money. So there's the, like, there's the, you know, incidental stuff which happens after the fact. What about production? Do you know, if this item's used in, in production and it produces, you know, whatever your factory's doing, then it's that downtime. Do you know, there's damage. What about accidents? Do you know, if this thing fails, another loss can be, you know, someone gets hurt, someone, something gets flooded. Um, do you know, the, so there are all of these issues that come into, you know, what, why we do preventative maintenance. But the big thing is we do it to minimise loss, whatever that loss may be. It could be, you know, the big ones that we all hear about, that we talk about, time and money, okay? Time because time's precious, money because it's precious as well. There's also two other facts as well, which is OH&S, you know, health and safety. There's even, you know, basically looking after the environment. You know, what's the environmental loss if that particular item fails? And if you actually, and you can actually, there are things called, you know, criticality assessments, which can actually look at all of these losses that you can, that occur, 
and you can actually use that to determine what the best way is to maintain a particular piece of plant. Okay, so that's it in, that's it in short as to what these losses are and why we do preventative maintenance. And now, let's just look at it now and say, okay, we're going to do preventative maintenance to minimise losses. Now, the, the next thing is, can we look at preventative maintenance saying, what is it? Like, what do you actually do? What is preventative maintenance? I'm going to break it down into some categories. PM can be broken down into three things. And we'll say, it can be time-based maintenance. In other words, every three months, we might change the brushes on a motor. Every, you know, 10,000 kilometres, we're going to change the filters on a car. Time-based, purely time-based. The other one is condition-based. Condition-based, okay? Now, condition-based is we're going to do some sort of measurements and it's going to be based upon a condition. And the third one, which is considered to be, from my point of view, a sort of um, maintenance or preventative maintenance, is inspections. Now, I always love it when I talk about this because I think most people go, inspections suck. What we do is we walk around with a notepad and we take down values and then we go back. It seems like a non-effort, like we're not doing anything. But it's, it's an inspection of basically going around and just checking things. Of those three items, you know, if you look at it and go, okay, what actually, what, of those there, what is the one that's going to most help you minimise your loss? And remember, that's what it's all about. It's called minimising. Except, I think that's not there. It's minimising. Minimising loss. Okay? The key one here is inspections. Because if you do inspections, you're going to let equipment run to the point where you're going to get maximum life out of it. Okay, that's the thing that's going to most help you reduce your costs, reduce your downtime, reduce your damage, reduce your planning, reduce the environmental impact, all of those things. Now let's go a step further. What sort of inspections are there? And basically I can break inspections into simple, um, you know, doing a simple inspection is basically using this stuff we have. Our hands, our ears, our eyes, if people even use their tongue you know, to do this sort of stuff, where you're basically observing what's going on and you're keeping it pretty simple. The next thing is you can start becoming, you can, you can start doing measurement. Okay, where you can start actually, you know, say you take temperature readings and you go, hey, once it's over 120 degrees, we're going to then, you know, um, clean the filters on that item or it's going to become more exacting. And then from that, from the measurement, the, the next part that I would say would be trending. Now I hope you can see that there. Um, so they're the three main types of inspections. Now, of that, I, I've got to be honest, I'm a great believer in the simple stuff. Um, because many companies, you know, this is better. It is much better. And, I've, and if you've got a SCADA system, you can get so much data out of it right now. And there's so many tools and you know all the computer stuff you can buy these days, and things tell you what's going on. That's the that information can be very useful. So, but basically, if I was to summarise here, what it comes down to then is saying, you know, what preventative maintenance is, and the best preventative maintenance that we can do is doing inspections, whatever they may be. Okay, for example, that big motor that's sitting here. Um, simple inspections. Stick your hand on it to see if it's actually vibrating too much. Well, actually, and at the same time, you'll get a feeling for the heat of it as well. Noise, you know, is it starting to run rough? And I think, you know, it's funny, most people who work in a company for long enough can actually perceive, like they know when something's not right, and they can tell you that. Um, so the simple ones are actually a really good way of getting good preventative maintenance done. Of course, the, the and, you know, well, and sorry, back to the motor, so you can stick your hand on it. But we could go and say, okay, let's go a bit upmarket from that. We'll actually you get, go out and buy a temperature gauge or an infrared gauge, and we can use that to take the readings. And then, of course, we can start doing things like, well, we've got all this information coming in. 
Let's plot it out and see what's actually going on. Is it going up? Is it going down? Is it staying the same? Do you know, and from that, from trending it, say, okay, we've got about this much life left in it. Now, that's just a simple example of what sort of preventative maintenance can do. And really and truly, that will then lead you to make decisions on what you'll do with a piece of equipment. Again, an electric motor. I know I'm talking about a basic item. But really, it's just like say, okay, if it's running rough, let's go up plant, let's, you know, now we can actually prepare to actually change out the bearings because that's what's needed to be done. Or we can do more research. So it's simple forms of, of inspection will help us determine what the maintenance is. And now let's address a couple of the other things. Um, if you had something, you know, it, it's, there are forms of maintenance which are not going to help you minimise your loss. Preventative maintenance is about minimising losses. And you would have heard me refer to this thing at the start of this and going, well, okay, you'll probably throw it away if it fails. And um, I guarantee you we'll throw it away if it fails. Because that thing's going to cost us a couple of hundred bucks for a new one. So I could, I could do inspections on it and I can walk past it each day, blah, blah, blah. But there's no real value in doing that, especially in this shop that we've got here. So what I do is I just let it run to failure and maybe have a spare one on top of the dogger down the end. Simple as that, because my losses are not huge. However, I'll go another step. If this is used in a lab somewhere, if this is used by, you know, it's, it's making some sort of pharmaceutical that's, you know, costs a million dollars an ounce, I don't want that thing to fail ever. Because the thing is, if it fails and it contaminates that stuff there, it's gonna cost us so much money. So I would change it. But in general, if it's sitting on top of a bending machine um, and it's not a critical bit of gear, you go, yeah, it's okay, just let the thing fail. Now I'm just gonna go and look at one more piece of equipment that I've got here and just talk about that for a sec. And um, as another example of the whole thing, I mean, okay, I've moved down the shed to another you know, piece of gear. How many of you guys have these things? Trucks, cars, etc. Okay, I actually came from a mining background where we used to deal with mobile gear. And I can guarantee you that the losses that you're trying to prevent are probably not any part of your preventative maintenance. You know, what, what is the bog standard way to maintain this bit of gear? You service it, you know, and it says, you know, every 10,000 kilometres we're going to change the filters, change the oils. At 25 might do the plugs. At 100,000 there might be a timing belt that has to be changed out. It's all simple stuff. It's all, you know, the basic stuff. But I, I, will give the I will throw the question at you. Yes, you can do that. But is that a good maintenance program and what else needs to be done? Because the, what you have to say is, what fails on this bit of gear that costs me a lot of time? Um, if, for example, this wasn't a ute, but instead it was a, a front-end loader, um, then I'd say wear depth on your bucket is really essential to know. Um, if it's a truck, I mean, it comes down to, I actually found this is a long time ago, but one of the major reasons why we had downtime on a truck was because the radio kept not working. And therefore, the guys would actually bring it back to base because the radio wasn't working and take another truck. So part of my PM program was to actually say, include the radio in the service. You know, once, a, you know, whenever that unit comes in, make sure the radio is running in spec, is top spec, spec order. Because the thing is, we don't want it to come back. And I know it sounds naffy and it sounds stupid, but that's what happens. It's often the things that you, that you don't consider to be maintenance that can cause you huge losses. So just remember that, you know, whether it's an electric motor, whether it's a car, whether it's any sort of facility, any sort of equipment, it comes down to the PM we do is about the minimizing the loss you have. So thanks for watching and uh, see you in the next one.